So these are the moorings on Short Dyke, which leads to and from Rockland Broad, which is just off the River Yare here on the Southern Broads, and uh, these are quite substantial key headings as you can see. We're also at low water at the present time, so there is quite a rise and fall. So if you are coming to any of these locations on the Southern Rivers, do remember to leave enough slack in your ropes. Um, but these, as I said, are the short dike moorings. There's been a lot of work going on of uh, late along here, and uh, I believe to sort of improve the flood defence um, capabilities of the moorings, I believe that's exactly what they are for, hence why they're so built up here. And you can see the land beyond is lower than the, the mooring. So, yes, you can moor here. There's no, no mooring signs. And um, I'm sure that, you know, if you did more here, you would have to use your rond anchors, of course. There's no mooring posts provided. Um, but it would make for a lovely walk along here. It's all grass. It's nice and flat. So um, we've just come through Rockland Broad, which was lovely as usual, having overnighted at uh, Rockland St Mary. And we went to the new inn last night, which I can thoroughly recommend. It's a great place to eat. Um, not the largest of menus, but the food that was on there was absolutely cooked to perfection and uh, very nice surroundings as well. So it's 10.26 in the morning, it's day two of the Captain's Blog and you join us here on the River Yare yeah, heading towards Reedham. Well, we've got quite a journey ahead of us today because we'll be going um, through down the new cut, turning right and heading towards Alton Broad, that's our uh, destination today, Alton Broad Yacht Station, we've pre-booked a uh, mooring there. Um, so it's going to take from Rockland Save, where we came from, uh, without any stops, about four and a half hours. So says my uh, journey time spreadsheet thingy. Um, so we're actually on the river here at the moment, and we've seen a couple of boats heading towards Norwich. We're the only boat currently heading towards Reedham. Um, so that's what we're doing at the present time. It's supposed to rain later, but at the moment, as you can see, well, we're all a bit blustery, and you can probably can tell that on the microphones on the camera. It's actually quite nice. It's a little bit nippy, but not too bad. Got the back down. So I thought I'd better introduce you to my dad, Chris. Hi, everybody. Well, as Robin says, we're hoping to get to Alton Broad in around four and a half hours. It would be really good if it doesn't rain today. Don't know how lucky we're going to be, but we'll make as much way as we can before it does rain. Certainly the weather is a little bit blustery today, but uh, very enjoyable for me. I've, uh, I've been uh, designated that I could come on uh, uh, a holiday with the uh, London Rascal for this uh, fortnight break. Since introducing Robin to the Broads, when he was eight years old, he's never looked back. I know he has a really loyal following, and uh, we're really having a good time together. Bit of a uh, bit of good free time together. Anyway, good to speak to you all. So, as ever with the captain's blog, there'll be more as it happens when it happens, and hopefully nothing too serious will happen. Um, we had a little bit of an issue last night with our batteries, uh, which was sorted out by Andy this morning and it um, wasn't actually the batteries or the boat, it was just him not putting one of the terminals back on. So uh, we've got power, we've got drive, and um, everything's going well. Next point of reference will be coming round uh, the Beauchamp Arms, uh, which is somewhere along here. Then of course there's going to be Cantley and the Sugar Factory, and then Reedham, and then the New Cut, Summer Leighton and on and on. More as it happens. So as you can see we just passed in the uh, Beecham Arms and I'm sorry if I say that wrong. Um, it's a name that always gets me confused and can never remember. I simply say it's because it's not an English word. So there we are. Um, this is the current state of play then on the river. Uh, we saw a private boat go past, but this is Easter Sunday um, on the River Yare. So I don't know what the state of play would be like up on the northern rivers if you were, you know, heading along the River Bure, you know, towards Horning or somewhere like this on Easter Sunday. I know that looking at a lot of the websites, the bookings seem very good, 
Um, Richardson's, for example, over the Easter weekend had very little availability, um, which is why we are actually down here on the Southern Broads for a change. I um, mean, it's always good to mix and match and uh, try new things and having been on the Southern Broads from the Northern, this is the first holiday ever that I have started on the Southern Broads. The only other problem I have is that, try as I might, I cannot find anywhere on this boat that um, accepts these uh, suction mounts um, safely. It will stick fine and then about an hour later it will just pop off. So I really don't want to be uh, trusting the camera to, uh, you know, come off me to river on the air or something. But I'll, I'll persevere, we'll see what we can do. Maybe I'll stick one to one of the glass windows on the side of the boat. Um, and we'll see, because it would be good to get some nice shots of uh, the rivers. set to come out because uh, it is a bit more nippy now but uh, it's still dry while ever it's dry I think the canopy will remain down. Um, one of the things I really like about this boat is the hull, it's a Seamaster 30 hull and when you have, um, for example, a boat just went past uh, a broom and it wasn't particularly going too fast but it was going fast enough to create a really nice rolling wash. And the shape of this hole just, you know, it goes straight through it and there's a nice little roll and there's nothing, no crashing, it doesn't roll too much. Um, it deals with it really well. Um, so just some little things for sort of your boat enthusiasts or a well-designed hole, this one does well. I would not like to be on a bathtub, for example, on the southern rivers when you know somebody's coming towards you with quite a wash because you'll just crash and slam into it. They've got no point to them at all. So in fact the sun's just coming out behind us. Um, I'll let you know when we get to Cantley. It's a weird situation because you see it over there and as you come round the bend in the river it sort of changes its position slightly. And coming towards us, I believe from maybe Alpha Craft, Brundle, it's the first higher craft I've seen. That was a good guess from Alpha Craft. So there you go. It's Easter Sunday and the first higher craft I've seen all day. Apart from those at Stave, which left earlier uh, Rockland Stave. It's also the first time I've been afloat over Easter. As you can see, we're approaching Cantley, the Cantley Sugar Works. I've still yet to come past here when this is actually doing stuff and churning out piles of steam and stuff. Um, but anyway, Cantley Sugar Works is uh, coming up, gives you an idea where we are, how far we've got to go. If you're following along at home and you've got the map out and you're thinking, okay, they started off at Rockland St Mary, they left there, they went across Rockland Broad, they turned right, they got on the air, and uh, now they're approaching Cantley. You sound like some kind of tour guide on your left hand side. Time, by the way, is five minutes past 11. It's Sunday the 20th of April. And in true British style, despite the wind and the chill, when you're on the broads and you've got a boat that is capable of it, I say keep the top down. So here is uh, Cantley up close and personal. You've got the reed cutter pub there, which is uh, very nice. 
uh, apparently does very nice ales and uh, food. And then of course just over here you've got the moorings that are provided by the BA 24 hour moorings there which is very nice. And then you've got this, the huge sugar beet factory. Which uh, depending on sort of your feelings is either something that's uh, architecturally appalling blot on the landscape or otherwise you know would miss it if it wasn't here you know so we're just uh, passing hardly drainage mill and I've done the schoolboy era of recording when I wasn't recording so um, sorry you missed the front of it there um, I think the canopy is going to have to come up because this looks like this has got rain in it and we've been waiting for the rain to come it's uh, raining in London apparently uh, the winds got up the temperatures dropped significantly in the last sort of 10 minutes or so and in fact I can just see on the windscreen some first spots of rain Fortunately this boat has a very easy winder and the canopy comes up in a matter of moments. So that's where we are at the present time. So uh, yeah I'll update you as it goes. It's a, it's a bit of more a raw kind of a feel to things. It depends how I feel or what boat I'm on as to how the captain's blog kind of progresses. Uh, it's not just about where you go and what you do along the way. And because this boat's a bit of an old girl and it's got the old 1500 BMC under your feet, it feels like a real kind of a journey. You're plodding along, you're out in the elements, um, you know, it's not a refined modern cruiser with all the luxuries. It's a boat. It's like a classic car. So I was just talking about how this is a, a classic boat, a bit like a classic car and uh, it's a real sort of chugging along journey. And then the heavens opened. I'm about to uh, raise the canopy. And now I'm in the canopy and we're uh, chugging down the river here. Alright, I admit it. The sound of a BMC is a bit monotonous. I've got this. left Reedham, it's very breezy at the moment, but there is the Haddisco New Cut in front of us. We're still heading against the tide, but once we get down the bottom of the Haddisco Cut and turn right, we should have that tide behind us, which will help us 
all the way to Alton Broad. Freedom Quayside was busy but with spaces we stopped off in order to get some salt and some more drinks. I'm going to go for now because the wind is just too much and, um, and we're aware of uh, what it sounds like when you're watching it back. And here's an update nonetheless of where we are and the time now is five minutes to one in the afternoon. Our planet will be just a point of light. Hardly distinguishable from the many other points of light. Nearby planets, far off suns. But precisely because of the obscurity of our world, such a picture might be worth having. just passed through Summerlet and Swing Bridge which like Reader was in the swan open position for river traffic and of course since coming down the new cut we're on a different river, river now we're and uh, we'll be taking this until the uh, division uh, where we'll be taking Alden Dyke to Alden Broad because if you took the other direction you'd head off into Beckham's Now the wind has got back up again the legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty. That good ship and true was a bone to be chewed When the gales of November came early The ship was the pride of the American side Coming back from some mill in Wisconsin As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most With a crew and good captain well seasoned Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms When they left fully loaded for Cleveland Then later that night when the ship's bell rang Could it be the north wind they'd been feeling? The wind and the wires made a tattletale sound and the wave broke over the railing And every man knew as the captain did too Twas the witch of November come stealing The dawn came late and the breakfast had to wait When the gales of November came slashing When afternoon came it was freezing rain in the face of a hurricane west wind
just thought I'd report we've got some lovely uh, wind over tide going on here. So we've got the uh, the wind coming towards us and the tide we're going with and so we're getting these nice little uh, almost little white horses as you can see here uh, little waves and uh, really is quite a nice uh, motion on the boat and uh, testament to nice goods as I was talking the other day about the hull design it really just cuts through these and rides them really well so for, a, for an old girl the old Broads cruiser, she was uh, had good foundations with the uh, Seamaster 30 hull that she's got. So we're still on the Waveney and um, still got a fair way to go before we get to where we need to be going. took the right hand one you'd head off towards the Waverley River Centre and onwards towards Beckles. I'm sorry that today hasn't been as exciting or as interesting for the captain's pod viewers just because of this wind. Um, tomorrow I'm going to try and find a place where I can securely put the camera for some going along pretty shots because honest to god these southern broads, each river is different, the way you are different to the air, or the broad different to you know, where we were last night in Rockland St Mary. And I'm, t I'm meaning the broads as a whole, northern broads and southern broads. So, do come and try the southern broads. Uh, you know, even if it's windy and it's not particularly warm, um, it's still a great time to come. And Easter usually, well, sometimes it snows, sometimes it's glorious, sometimes it's just windy like this. But anyway, if you have been watching Data, the captain's blog, thank you very much. Sorry about the wind noise and the cameras. Um, we'll try and do something about it tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.